Hello everyone. Welcome back to my tech show. Today I have an exciting new project for you. We are going to take a journey from building an integrated local environment for microservices to deploy them as a scalable cloud application. Imagine being able to run early integration tests in your local environment or in your CI pipeline before deploying your services. What if you had an infrastructure template that allow you to publish these tester services to fresh cloud environment with all required standards and configuration all in a single command that's exactly what we are going to do today let's get started this is my project in project overview we have high level architecture consist of the following components uh, i have front end service here uh, it's built with Vue.js. The front-end service is responsible for the user interface. Uh, it makes API call to the back-end services to fetch uh, data here. Uh, and I have back-end service developed with Python Flask. That back-end service handles the API request from front-end. It uh, processes this request and interacts with the database to retrieve and you know, uh, return the data. Uh, and also I have a uh, couple of test cases, integration tests that, you know, uh, I'm running to make sure that uh, all my uh, services are working as uh, expected. Um, and I, ha I have my uh, infrastructure template that I'm uh, using for my cloud deployment. In here, if we think about the uh, cloud uh, architecture diagram uh, you can see here so as you can see I'm using AWS Fargate uh, for this uh, uh, solution and uh, I am deploying my front-end services in uh, you know uh, public subnet uh, with the you know uh, load balancer and I have my back-end services uh, in the private subnet uh, with the RDS uh, database uh, we are going to go, go through uh, this architecture and uh, what are the things that uh, we have achieved here and the challenges we have faced. Uh, before that, why we are using AWS Fargate here? Since I don't have a large set of microservices that would require a Kubernetes cluster, but still need to manage containerized workload efficiently. First off, Fargate eliminate the need for me to manage service. With Fargate, there's no need for me to provision, configure, or scale clusters of virtual machines to run my containers. This means I can focus solely on building and deploying my application without the headache of managing the underlying infrastructure. The second is the cost efficiency. One of the best features of Fargate is that I only pay for the resources my containers actually use. This is particularly cost effective for smaller workloads compared to running a full Kubernetes cluster. Plus, there's no need for over provisioning. Fargate allocates the right amount of resources automatically, saving me money and uh, reducing waste. Third is scalability and flexibility. Fargate handles the automatic scaling for me, adjusting the demand without manual intervention, uh, whether my application needs more resources or fewer. Fargate scale up, down, uh, meet my needs. Additionally, it offers flexible configuration for CPU and memory so I can tailor the resources specifically for my containers. Number four, faster deployment. Getting started with Fargate is uh, quick and easy. I can deploy my containers application without uh, setting up a complex cl cluster infrastructure. This allows me to focus on writing code and delivering features rather than worrying about the infrastructure. If you talk about the ideal, you know, use case for Fargate, Fargate is Fargate for microservice application, especially when I don't need the complexity of a Kubernetes cluster. It's also ideal for running batch jobs, data processing tasks, and web application that need to scale dynamically based on the user traffic. Uh, in conclusion that, you know, uh, using AWS Fargast uh, is an optimal choice for, you know, many scenarios. It's uh, great for projects like, you know, mine, where I want to minimize infrastructure management, reduce cost and scale efficiently. 
uh, without uh, need for the kubernetes cluster setup uh, by handling the you know underlying infrastructure forget empower me to focus on building and you know improving my application uh, leading to faster delivery uh, of you know high quality software okay as a first demo let's set up our local uh, test environment so let's spin up uh, each of our services and uh, uh, run our integration test uh, in our local environment to make sure the all services are okay before you know uh, deploy our services to cloud environment so as you can see here in our project uh, for each service uh, we have for example in backend we have a docker file uh, that build the you know uh, required you know environment to run that project for example backend uh, this run on the uh, python 3.8 uh, docker image so for that uh, on top of that we are you know uh, copying our you know project file and we are installing all the you know uh, requirements we are using for example in here we are using flask you know boto and my sql uh, these are the requirements we are using so we are installing them and exposing our backend service on uh, 5001 similarly we have you know uh, front end service uh, it's run on top of the uh, uh, node 40 and we are copying our file and uh, we expose uh, our front end service on uh, 8080 uh, and we have our test uh, cases we have written in there also uh, I'm using uh, Playwright. Uh, so if you doesn't know much about the Playwright, you know Playwright is uh, you know something similar to Selenium. So it's kind of you know open source automation library for you know browser testing and uh, web scraping developed by Microsoft. Uh, so I'm using it here uh, to run uh, your automation uh, testing. Uh, just to test the front end that whether uh, uh, it's load uh, all the required books and uh, uh, components from back end and it's uh, rendered as expected uh, uh, here uh, yeah and uh, on top of that we have our docker compose file uh, this is where you know uh, we compose our environment uh, with all the required services uh, for example in here uh, on top of that uh, we have the our uh, front-end service first so it will you know uh, get built from the you know front-end folder and it will find out the front-end docker file and build the uh, front-end environment and uh, as you seen before it's exposed on uh, uh, port 8080 and we are setting up some you know environment variable uh, because front end uh, need to know uh, where it need to go for the you know uh, back end services so we are exposing uh, it via environment variable and here as you can know that our front end uh, services uh, depend on back end and mysql so uh, those services need to be available first before you know uh, the front end service so then uh, based on that you know backend service similarly uh, look up for the uh, backend folder and find out the docker file and it will uh, build the environment and expose on uh, 5001 similarly we are exposing uh, all required environment variable for the database connectivity for you know mysql database we need the host port user a password then uh, uh, these environment variables and it's depend on the mysql database as mysql you know local database i'm using uh, mysql 8.0 uh, docker image uh, and i have mapped you know uh, some of the uh, volumes locally and uh, for the initial setup for the local database i'm using this uh, init sql uh, uh, sql script it will you know bootstrap the uh, uh, my database uh, it will create you know initial table and see the uh, required data and uh, create uh, the required users and grant privileges etc if you need to do something uh, you know on your database before uh, using it so uh, you can you know set up uh, it as a you know initialized script so this is uh, that is what uh, i have done here 
for the cloud environment i have done something you know uh, differently i let you know why and uh, how we uh, did it for the you know database initialization uh, for now uh, this is what we have uh, for the front end back end and mysql service so once we have all that so we have you know uh, our test service so that depend on front end back end mysql if all these three available then we will run our test uh, it will you know uh, go to the you know our test folder and find out this uh, docker file test and it will build up our test environment uh, as i have showed you before so in there we have our you know test app uh, in here as a, you know demo i just have you know very basic to test method but uh, uh, you will get the idea and you can have very comprehensive you know test suit uh, to test your uh, application in here for you know testing backend i am just you know uh, get uh, checking that backend uh, api endpoint and whether i am getting the uh, correct status code uh but for the front end i am you know uh, using that uh, playwright uh, uh, browser automation testing tool i am you know accessing the you know front end page and i am checking whether i am getting the correct title and also i am accessing the you know list of books and check whether uh, the correct books are there so likewise you know you get the idea so uh, you can have comprehensive you know test suite uh to test your front end and all your back end services and uh, you can make sure everything is uh, you know correct and in order uh, as you expect uh, to behave all your services uh, even before you know deploy to any uh, environment you can test all these things in your uh, local environment so let's see how it's uh, work so let me open my docker compose file so as i promised in a single command we can just uh, bring up all these environment uh, docker compose uh, up so it will bring up uh, you know all the uh, environment as we specify in the uh, docker compose file but let's say if you need to build uh, you know uh this you know environment first and bring it up if you need to build all the you know docker files first uh, and then bring it up you can add the uh, build tag as well so then it will make sure uh, fresh build though if you have done any changes uh, to environment uh, your files to make sure all these changes are you know baked in your docker file and then using those uh, uh, docker images uh, Uh, you will you can bring it up to your uh, environment so as soon as i fire it so it will start building uh, the each so it's completed the back end build and then the front end build and the test build and then as you can see within a minute uh, all my uh, back end services up front end services up and test services up <coughs> and as you can see front end service is, is run on local host 8080 and uh, back end services is uh, up and uh, you can see uh, it run my test step as well and i can see all my uh, two test cases passed okay if we need to test this in our local browser uh, as it mentioned let's test it okay local host 8080 we can see our you know front end web application it's loading its uh, books if you refresh it you can see the you know back end service also getting the you know api books uh, request and it's returning the uh, uh, all books so as you can see at the back end service also working as expected if you just wanted to you know see the back end service by accessing here we can Uh, test it as well so the back end 5001 api books yeah so it will uh, return the list of uh, books as well uh, so i hope you get the idea so you have you know 
whatever the technology you use for your back end front end or any other microservices you have maybe it's 510 microservices depending on your use case uh, if you have them you know containerized separately then you just what you need to do you can have a docker compose file with all the dependencies defined and then you can simply spin up your test environment locally and uh, you can run your uh, test project against it similarly the same thing you can do in your ci cd pipelines as well let's say if you have you know couple of microservices you know uh, build successfully once it build if you need to do you know uh, integration test you know with all the rest of the services you can run your docker compose in your uh, ci environment as well to make sure uh, it's you know uh, comply with all the rest of the uh, services and working as expected okay as a second demo i'm going to show you how we are going to build our cloud environment for that we are going to use uh, terraform uh, so let's uh, dig deep into our terraform modules and uh, components we are using for that uh, first i'll show you the uh, network setup so i'm using generic you know aws terraform uh, vpc module and using that time uh, quickly setting up uh, vpc with public and uh, private subnet Uh, all these variables you know i have defined uh, here all the public and private uh, uh, cidrs and the vpc cidrs uh, so you can uh, uh, clone the project and uh, see details uh, uh, how i have configured the network here uh, so apart from the uh, main public and private subnets i have you know configured the uh, uh, db subnet group as well because uh, i am planning to have a rds as well uh yeah so in our main terraform file we have our uh, you know ecs task definition uh before that we have our ecs cluster we are creating ecs cluster here and uh, then we are defining our uh, ecs task definition uh, so first we have our front end task so in there we are defining uh, cpu memory values and the uh, task execution role what are the permission that you know uh, this task required to run uh, in the you know uh, forget environment in some cases specifically if you are using any particular aws services you may need to you know uh, create permission for file and assign that uh, uh, permission to uh, the task as execution role then Uh, that task can execute uh, uh, access those services without any issue uh, so then we have the container definition in there we are defining where it can uh, pull the image so the same image we have tried in the local so i have uh, pushed it into the docker registry so we are pulling the image from there then the port mapping uh, as you have seen in the local i am using the same local port container port you know mapping to the same and uh, the environment variable uh, so in the local we have you know set this as a back end uh, you know uh, url uh, in the cloud environment i am dynamically setting this uh, to the load balancer uh, you know dns uh, Uh, i'll show you in the load balancer how i have configured to you know uh, go through the uh, back end uh, api calls through the load balancer uh, and lastly you can see the log configuration uh, so what is the log group and uh, we region and the uh, prefix i have used here so you can uh, uh, go to that log group and see that particular logs for this particular uh, task and service similarly for the back end uh, task definition uh, same things here uh, only difference is the you know image name port and the environment variables uh, based on the uh, uh, environment we are creating for example db host we are creating the rds so uh, we dynamically 
uh, creating the RDS instance and we are getting the endpoint uh, here and assigning uh, it to the ECS task uh, so then uh, you know when we are creating it will know where to you know go for the DB and same as the log group then we have the service setup the front end uh, uh, as for the demo we are you know configure the decide count as one so in your live environment based on the uh, expectation you can uh, set the you know decide count and the network configuration and the front end uh, you know i am uh, using the public subnet i am deploying uh, front end service in uh, public subnet uh, and exposing it through uh, via load balancer i am creating a target group and assigning it to the uh, uh, service uh, similarly for the backend uh, backend as you can see i am you know deploying it in private subnet uh, i have separate you know front end and back end security groups you know make sure that you know front end can access uh, from the internet but the back end uh, service only through the uh, uh, front end service or the load balancer if you check the load balancer in here i am creating the load balancer and the two target groups for the front end and back end uh, in the listener rules you can see uh, basically uh, for the backend slash shape all the slash api uh, calls you know basically forward into the backend and the by default all the rest of the calls you know going to the front end uh, so you can configure this the, uh, as per your uh, situation uh, the other main component is you know uh, db instance so i am creating uh, my sql database here uh, I'm using that uh, DB subnet group I have used. Uh, and since it's on the private subnets, I'm not, you know, uh, allowing it to, you know, publicly accessible. So only the, you know, backend service can access this database for the security. Make sure the uh, security based practices so then uh, you if you remember that uh, the how we have initialized the database in our uh, local setup we had our you know init sql script and you know once the db is up we are running it to you know uh, bootstrap the database and the seed all the tables and set user permission right so in this case since we are using you know database rds in the private subnet and uh, without you know uh, able to pub publicly accessible uh, so we cannot run that uh, you know init sql uh, script from our local to you know rds instance uh, so to overcome that uh, i have you know a lambda function created so called you know init rds user in there i have included uh, uh, all my uh, database uh, initialization functions uh, so i am uh, creating uh, using terraform i am creating the lambda function and i am deploying it through you know s3 bucket and then once the instance uh, my sql instance is ready then i will invoke the lambda function uh, so in the same project you will see this lambda folder and this is the lambda function i am uh, using basically it has you know a couple of functions that uh, create the database user if not you know exist and you know grant privileges then create the required uh, table so in our case i am creating the book table and then seed it uh, so this is the lambda function so i have you know shell script to package it and you know then 
in here the terraform uh, using that package i will you know upload it to the s3 bucket and through that i am deploying it uh, so that's pretty much of it uh, you know the configuration wise uh, so uh, i'll show you the security uh, terraform file as well so basically in here i have configured uh, different security group uh, basically for the load balancer front end back end uh, so based on your requirement you can configure all these security group uh, ideally for the front end should be able to access from the internet and the, you know only the back end should be uh, only accessible uh, through uh, since the request coming from load balancer i'm uh, allowing you know only uh, to the uh, load balancer security group uh, similarly for the rds uh, only should be accessible from the uh, backend services and the you know lambda security group so i'm allowing uh, db to only access from the uh, backend and the uh, lambda function and uh, also the you know ecs task execution role uh, uh, what are the permission that we required uh, to have there uh, so these things i'm i have configured here so let's you know run our terraform script and see how quickly we can spin up our you know cloud environment uh, so if you can see my console here i am currently in uh, the fargate web app our repo so I will cd into uh, terraform folder and I can uh, do terraform init so it will initialize all the backends and the download required uh, plugins uh, so uh, you can see what are the you know uh, uh, providers and plugins we have uh, used here uh, so all these things uh, will be downloaded during the uh, init phase so then we can do the uh, terraform uh, plan and I have variable file defined uh, for the uh, uh, with all the terraform variables i'll show you before executing that as well uh, so what is the you know uh, db username passwords uh, i'm you know configuring for this project so in your case you can uh, configure uh, whatever the you know secrets that uh, you want uh, let's see uh, Yeah. So in the Terraform plan, it will show us it will it's going to create 56 you know uh, new resources. Uh, as you can see, it will create a WSP PC and public-private subnets, and uh, you know all these is cluster RDS. Uh, uh, all the load balancers lambda functions all the resources is going to show here so you can take your time and uh, review all these components what other thing it's going to create so if you are satisfied with it you can just uh, do the terraform apply Yeah, it will prompt you for your permission so then you can type yes and it's you know it's going to start creating the cluster
okay now our terraform script you know created successfully and uh, as output it's return our you know uh, the application node balancer endpoint so let's see log into the aws console and check you know how things are you know configured here first i am going to the uh, elastic container service so i can see that main cluster is created and uh, our front end and back end services created and you know status active uh, you know tasks running we'll have a look yeah. The front end service, you know, attach with the you know, front end uh, target group and it's healthy. Similarly, we have back end service, it's still, I think, in progress. So, it's also attached with the back end, uh, you know, target group. Uh, so, it's healthy. Let's go to the front end tail load balancer. This is our front end tail B, and you know it's configured. Uh, we we have our two rules configured here. All the you know slash API request going to the backend, and the rest of the you know request going to our front end as we have configured over there mm -hmm. and let's check our RDS yeah now database instance is created and we can see it's you know available So let's try to access our front end load balancer and see how it's working. Yeah, in the first run, as you can see, it's working as expected. So we can see the books as well that means you know backend service returning our books and you know uh, books getting from the database so end-to-end -end workflow is working if we need to see the network call yeah you can see this books function here see, from the same uh, <coughs> load balancer so it's calling the api books endpoint so as we have configured our rules we know that slash api goes to the backend and it fetching all the books and we are getting 200 with that it's you know displaying here so as you can see so we can use this you know Terraform uh, template as a you know uh, quick and easy way to you know deploy your application. So uh, if you have any uh, multiple uh, services that you need to deploy into your uh, Fargate cluster, you just need to you know add here uh, new task and the service. So currently we have this front end and back end service let's say if we have multiple back end services uh, as per your requirement you can define your you know tasks and define the container and the ports and everything and based on that uh, you can have a uh, back end uh, service and everything configured uh, so that is uh, pretty much of it 
so so far we have talked about you know how we can uh, uh, spin up all these services quickly in your local environment and test it uh, you run your uh, functional testing and the you know integration test uh, on your uh, uh, front and back end service and make sure that everything is uh, working as expected then uh, how you can you know deploy all your uh, services uh, into cloud environment in a single command so using this uh, configuration template it will configure uh, deploy all your database and you know uh, initialization scripts and creating tables seeding data and creating uh, the ecs cluster deployment task configuration uh, security groups and the creating load balancer and uh, relevant tool for the forwarding so everything is done in you know uh, within couple of uh, using couple of terraform scripts so you can use this as a you know baseline template and modify uh, for your requirement so this is basically uh, if you don't want to manage uh, kubernetes cluster with you know complex requirement if you require you know uh, to manage uh, kubernetes cluster or from the scratch creating a kubernetes cluster if you follow my uh, tutorials we have uh, many terraform templates uh, uh, already created then if you go through the previous articles you will find out uh, many articles about you know uh, deploying services to eks cluster or creating a kubernetes cluster from the scratch in a single click uh, so there are a couple of uh, articles about that within you know 15 to 20 minutes you will be able to spin up uh, kubernetes cluster using a terraform script so yeah there are various options depending on your problem you need to you know evaluate your requirement first and decide what is the right solution uh, so that's all we have for today uh, session uh, hope you enjoy and uh, if you have any questions you can you know add it into uh, the comment section uh, i'll you know try to you know reply as uh, much as i can thanks again